Okay, let's talk about compound interest. And this is a really cool uh, topic in mathematics. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you are studying compound interest. And if you um, are not studying compound interest, this right here is the compound interest formula. And compound interest has to do, obviously, with this uh, concept of interest, which is kind of a financial concept, right? Like if you uh, start off with a particular amount, and a bank, um, you know, you invest a particular amount in, let's say, a bank, a savings account, and that uh, bank is going to give you a particular interest, that money is going to grow over time into something larger, right? So this is the kind of the concept of earning interest. And um, the compound interest formula is pretty much uh, specifically um, related to like kind of financial problems. But really, it's kind of a uh, special case on a broader topic called exponential growth okay and exponential growth graphically will look something like this okay we have also have exponential uh decay but we'll just stick to this exponential growth and what happens is actually let me draw this a little better is things kind of grow slowly over a period of time but eventually they kind of really build upon themselves and then they take off right so you probably thought of this or heard of this in terms of investing you say like oh if you invest hundred dollars a month you know, and you, in a particular savings account over 30, 40, 50 years, you'll end up with like a million dollars, right? So that's kind of an illustration of compound interest. And if I have my quotes correctly, I believe Albert Einstein said that the uh, most powerful uh, force in the universe is uh, compound interest. But again, this is a um, really a take on exponential growth. So um, you can see here, in this particular formula that we do have some exponents going on. So we have a power situation, right? So anyway, so I'm gonna get into all that and more, and we're going to do this example problem here in a second uh, so we can really understand compound interest. But first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most robust, comprehensive, maybe even the best online video-based math help program there is. I'm gonna leave a link uh, to my math help program in the description of this video, but whether you need to take a full course or need um, help with the course that you're in, you're going to um, uh, really get a lot from my program. So my program, I have full, complete lessons, way more than what I do on YouTube, plus, I solve thousands and thousands of problems. I show you how to do them video-based. So that's probably the biggest benefit that people get from my program is that, hey, whatever problem, you can probably find that problem type in my program and see how to solve it. But um, as a math teacher, I just can't help to stress the importance of taking notes. It's just uh, something I've seen over the decades is those students who take great notes um, often have the best math grades and the reverse is true. Those students who struggle with note taking, their grades also struggle. So, in the meantime, uh, you know, if your notes are not where they need to be, you need to work on that. Okay. But in the meantime, you do need something to study from. So, I actually offer math notes. I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video. Those would include uh, pre algebra, algebra one, uh, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. Okay. So let's get into this concept of compound interest. Again, this is the compound interest uh, formula, but there's a, two different formulas that we want to uh, consider when we're talking about compound interest. So the one that we're going to use in this example is um, it's specifically for things that are compounding an investment that is compounding a certain amount of times per year, Okay, a finite amount of times per year. Maybe it's once per year. Maybe it's once per quarter or twice per year. So if it's com compounding at a certain amount of times per year, then we use this formula here. Okay, and this is the example that we're going to be using. I'm going to make another video on this other situation for compound interest, and this is continuous compound interest, meaning that the your investment is uh, continuously growing. OK, so in that scenario or compounding, all right, which is kind of synonymous with the word growing, growing. So uh, continuous compound uh, interest, you would use this uh, formula here. So we're going to talk about what these um, variables stand for. But we'll let's just table this for another video, this continuous uh, compound interest. So, again, 
Now, it all depends on what the problem is asking. You either use uh, this or you use this formula, okay? And you'll it, it'll be uh, stated clearly because in the prom, it'll be like, hey, we have this particular investment and it's compounding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it will say, you know, from that information, you'll know, you know, I either use, need to use this formula or this formula. Okay, so let's get into this uh, problem, okay? But we got to first uh, understand what the formula is talking about, right? So I'm going to do a problem, I mean, an example here just to kind of uh, obviously, um, you know, see the application of the formula. But what are we talking about? So here you can see I already wrote out a bunch of stuff. Just focus on where I'm going to highlight here one step at a time so you don't get confused. What we're basically talking about is taking a principal amount. Okay, you go to a bank and you say, hey, listen, I got a thousand bucks. That's our principal starting amount. And what do you want to do with that thousand dollars? Well, you would like to save it or I mean invest it in a particular savings account, for example, um, and have that money grow. That's the whole objective, right, of investing. So your starting amount, okay, is your principal amount, and that is P. Okay, so that is our starting amount. Now over a period of time, that investment is going to grow, right? It's when it's invested compounded uh, with compound interest, that principal amount or starting amount will grow to an ending amount. So A is the amount that we eventually grow that investment to. Okay, so we start with P dollars, for example, and we're going to end up with A dollars. So that would be our ending balance. All right, so then we have this formula, and we just talked about what P stands for and what A stands for. All right, so let's take a look at the rest of this formula. Here we have a 1, okay, so that's pretty easy, plus R over N, okay? So what is R? Well, R is the annual rate, okay? So if a bank says, okay, it's 6% APR, okay, that's the annual percentage rate. So it'll be pretty clearly um, uh, defined in the problem what the interest rate is going to be applied to in this particular investment, okay? So that'll be R, and we have to um, express that as a decimal, okay? Generally, it's given to us as a percentage, so we'll have to switch that percentage uh, into decimal form. That'll be, uh, it's pretty easy here, and I'll show you that in, in this example. So that is what R is. Now, let's talk about what N is, okay? So we have uh, N, but we have it... Uh, two times in this formula. So N down here in this denominator and then N up is part of this uh, exponent. So N is uh, the amount of time this investment is being compounded per year. Okay, so that would be uh, specifically uh, delineated as well. So it's compounded N times per year. So whatever, how many times that is, that would be the number. Okay, and then T is how many years that investment, okay, our principal investment is being invested in, okay? So that's pretty easy, right? So if something was invested for 10 years, T would be 10. All right, so that is basically the compound uh, interest formula. So now let's go ahead and actually apply this formula uh, by doing this example problem. Okay, so here is our little example. And it says, uh, find the amount, okay, that, again, is going to be the future value, okay, the ending balance, the future value over a certain amount of, uh, a certain period of time elapsing, okay, so we're going to find the amount when a principal of $20,000, our starting amount, right, is invested at a 6% compounded daily for three years, okay? So we um, are going to take this $20,000, we're going to invest it at 6% compounded daily for three years. How much money are we going to have after those three years? Okay, so our principal amount, pretty easy. Okay, we're going to need P, right? That's $20,000, that's what this problem uh, states. Now R, our interest rate, is 6%, okay? So 6% compounded daily. We'll get to this daily part here in a second. But it's 6% that is our interest rate. Okay. Now, N is, again, go back up here. All right, we have to look what N is. Look what, uh, what this stands for. This is how many times 
this investment is being compounded. How many times per year? Well, in this problem, we're saying this is being compounded daily. So let's just go ahead and assume that there's going to be 365 uh, days in a year, not 364, uh, 365. So we'll use 365 uh, as how many days will be in a year. So this uh, 6% is being compounded over 365 times in a year. Okay. So this is our N value. And then it's going to be running a course of three years. So that is going to be our T value. Okay. So we got P, R, N, and T. And if we look up here, that's all we need. We have P, R, N, and T. All right, so now this just becomes basically a straight, you know, a plug into the formula and, you know, you don't make any mistakes with our calculator. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so here is our formula. So our principal again is 20,000 or 20,000 here, uh, $20,000, but let's, say, let's write it as 20,000. Our rate, okay, is 6%, but when we plug it in to our formula, we can't plug in 6%. This is a common place where students make a mistake. Do not forget that we have to write this as a decimal, so 6% as a decimal. Just divide that by 100 or move the decimal point over two places to the left. That's 0 0.06. Okay, so N, again, is 365, and uh, T is three years. So we're just going to plug in everything where it uh, needs to go into this formula. And here we go. Okay, so here is our principal, P, 1 plus the interest rate expressed as a uh, decimal, 0 0.06, divided by N, 365 to NT, and that's 365 times 3 or 3 years. And when we do this, you will uh, end up with $23,943.99. So our $20,000 over three years, okay, grew to $23,943.99. Now, if I wanted to ask you how much did this grow, this investment uh, grow, you would subtract these two values, okay? So got to be very careful on what the question is asking as well when it comes to these compound interest problems. But another mis uh, thing here that students kind of uh, will mess up is just basic order of operations, okay? So you can't multiply until you take care of these powers. So when you're focusing on doing this problem, okay, work on doing your parentheses, get this number, okay, write that down, then get this number, and then go into your calculator very carefully, evaluate this, and then finally multiply by the 20,000, and you'll get your answer. Okay, so basically, this is it, and... I think what gets students, you know, if um, you don't make any math mistakes in terms of changing your percent to decimal, what can get confusing is how many uh, years and how often something's being compounded. So you can have, you know, things being compounded quarterly. So that'd be your end would be four or biannually, that would be uh, two. And then how many years you might get this in like uh, three uh, years, eight months, you'll have to convert those into, into years. So your time, uh, uh, your T values, and sometimes you'll have to kind of do some conversions on it or think that through so you're accurately uh, plugging in the right amount. But again, the only way you're going to get good at this is to practice different variations of um, different variations of problems. So what we did here was a pretty easy problem. But once you've mastered compound interest, this particular formula, then you really want to make sure you get into this formula here, okay? And you can get into more sophisticated problems. I can ask you, I can say, hey, a particular investment uh, grew to this at this particular rate. How long was that invested for? So now we're looking at solving an exponential uh, equation, which is going to require natural logarithms. So again, you can kind of, you know, keep messing with this and become, you know, into more sophisticated problems. But first things first, you know, if you're studying uh, compound interest, get this formula down, do the simple problems, uh, easy ones first until you're comfortable with it. And then obviously start adding variety. So you got to uh, do more than just watch videos if you really want to understand math. But hopefully this video was a nice little tutorial for you and uh, helped you out. And if you, uh, 
this video did help you out, certainly I would appreciate you helping me out by smashing that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber to my channel and you like my teaching style, well, I would hope you would become a subscriber. I already have hundreds and hundreds of math videos on my channel that um, I have made over the years. I think at this time of this video, I've been on YouTube for over 10 years. Those videos are for you, okay? I love teaching math, and I'm posting new stuff all the time. But if you really want my best work, then go ahead and check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.